welcome you all for the great 10 civics first lesson of democratic governance okay putala today i am going to divide these lessons in many chapters because then only you can be able to learn it initially in today's chapter you can be able to learn about what is a democratic governance the origin and the expansion of the democracy special the types of democracy indirect democracy direct democracy and you can be able to learn many things democracy is accepted globally as a more desirable method of a good governance democracy is shows public opinion that means people are the part of that governance in nowadays in sri lanka also we can see in sri lanka we are also giving our vote to select the ministers parliament ministers and the president as well so as sri lankans we also using a democratic governance system today we are going to learn about the system of democratic governance under relevant topics let's study that origin and the expansion of democratic governance characteristics of democratic governance nature of the state and the government nature of the national state its origin and expansion role of the state nature of constitution and their characteristics organizational structure and the performance of the government responsibilities of citizen responsibilities towards citizen requirements for the success of democratic governance importance of democratic governments for so all these things you can study from the lesson introduction to democratic governance now we are going to understand what's the democratic governance okay so in the long history of civilization man used to live together with a view of facilitating the fulfillment of his basic needs with the gradual development of the society the need arose for an organized system of governance to facilitate the real society and safeguarded law and order now uh, when we are if we are discussing about the civilization of us so man used to live together with the view of facilitating the fulfillment of his basic needs uh, i think you all have good understanding about our older people especially the ancient people cave people so by the time they improved many technological equipments and by the time they uh, understand their needs and uh, anyway they live together with the view of uh, facilitating the fulfillment of his basic needs they concentrated okay they were concentrated about their basic needs so with the gradual development of the society the need arose for an organized system of governance to facilitate the will of the society and safeguarded law and order by the time they understood there should be a law to control their behaviors attitudes okay so they uh, identified many more things order systems accordingly various countries have practiced different methods of governance to rule them from the past they identified many ruling systems okay uh, monarchism federal aristocratic system and democratic governments can be cited as examples so these things we can get as the examples okay uh, and the other one is at present most countries including sri lanka are implementing democratic governance okay so at present nowadays most countries including our country sri lanka are implementing democratic governments nowadays we also have a democratic government okay democracy now we are going to understand what's the meaning of democracy okay in singhala there's a word that praja chantavade now i'm going to divide this word in three parts praja means people while tantra is the system of governance vaadhya is the ideology okay now people system of governance and the ideology mission accordingly democratic governance is the governance developed by the public to govern themselves okay anyway people also okay democratic governance is the governance be developed by the public to govern themselves people also have right to enter this government system okay if you consider the tamil word malakachi that means marker 
means people and RG means governance. Okay, in the sense, Malagachi simply means public governance. Okay, the word democracy is derived from the Greek words demos and kratos. Demos denotes public, while kratos denotes power. Public power. Democracy means public power. Okay, so the Greek meaning of the word is power of the people. Okay, power of the people is called democracy. Democracy, okay, the system of government which allows people to participate in the administration directly and indirectly is democratic government. Okay, this is very important. Underline this thing. The system of government which allows people to participate the administration directly and indirectly is democratic government. Nowadays also we are giving our votes to select the parliament ministers, especially the president and also those things we are calling democracy. As the participators we are also giving our vote, okay, directly, in a direct way, in a democratic government okay that's our right the origin and the expansion of democratic governance there is historical evidence to show that some features of democratic governance had existed in both east and the west now there's a historical evidence to show that some features of democratic governance had existed in both where east and the west now you can see in these two pictures uh, there are many evidences okay so the governance of greek city state police of athens was based on direct democratic principles the supreme governing body of the city state of athens was the citizens council okay now you have to underline these things these are very important points okay so the governance of greek what's that the uh, city state city state that means police of athens was based on direct democratic principles okay the supreme governing body of the city state was athens was the citizens council okay that consisted of citizens in the government in greece okay what's that citizens council that consisted of citizens in the government in Greece the citizens opinion on the function uh, functions of government have been directly considered in the citizens council okay so uh, the citizens opinion on the functions of the government have been directly considered the citizens council okay therefore the citizens were given an opportunity to take an active part in the government citizens are the main active part of the government who can take the decisions okay so but urban women slaves and foreigners were not allowed to participate in it these categories that mean urban women slaves and foreigners okay so they did not have right to participate this thing okay this method of governance in athens was recognized as direct democratic governance collective decision making can be cited as direct democratic governance okay now we all have a good understanding about the ruling system of athens now i'm going to summarize this again okay there was a city state uh, that is the police so athens uh, in athens there was a direct democratic principles and uh, there was a supreme government governing body okay so uh, athens was that is the citizens council that consisted of citizens in the government in greece urban women slaves foreigners were not allowed to participate in this other people uh, who are the citizens in athens they directly participated for the government decisions okay they were the active people in athens okay so now we all know about that history records about a republican government in the Vaj kingdom of india 
and in the 6th century we see the seven principles of aparihani dharma uh, have you all heard this word sapta aparihani dharma okay so uh, so vajkind in india in 6th century okay so they uh, that mean they use these seven principles okay that was called aparihani dharma of vajji kingdom can be seen in the present democratic government governance too okay nowadays also we can see these things in vajji kingdom some of them are given below okay regular meetings and discussions okay in uh, aparihari dharma there are some features okay so these are the things regular meetings and discussions they should gather they should keep the meetings and they should discuss about the matters meet discuss and live peacefully without no error without no any doubts without no any wars without no any problems they have to meet discuss and live peacefully harmony avoid framing of non functional laws strict enforcement of frame laws and obedience to frame laws okay so avoid framing of non functional laws no one can give non functional laws okay and strict enforcement of frame laws and obedience to frame laws there are some rules people they have to obey those rules respect elders obey and respect advice and abide by them okay these four things are the very compulsory things of aparihani dharma accordingly this shows how the east followed the principles of democracy in the governments now accordingly this shows how the east followed the principles of democracy in their governance with these evidence we can get an idea about how did they follow the that aparihana dharma especially principles of democracy in their governments because okay we can get an idea about that from 5th century ad up to the 15th century ad the federal system existed in europe underline these three these are very important things okay from 5th to 15th century federal system existed in where in europe after the 15th century ad the advancement of commercial economy took place replacing the agricultural economy which was based on service bound land use now the advancement of commercial economy took place replacing the agriculture economy which was based on service bound land use have you heard this word in singhala vadavasam that one okay at the same time the capitalist class also emigrated okay at the same time the capitalist class also emigrated okay after the 15th century national status came into the existence in europe after the 15th century make certain this well national status came into the existence in europe okay with the spread of liberal ideas now this national states came in to the existence in europe with liberal ideas the freedom of the individual was greatly appreciated freedom of individual okay was greatly appreciated they gave most important place for the individual's freedom okay the power of the people's representatives to presidents over that of the monarchy now the power of people's representatives to presidents over that of the monarchy okay for the government the english revolution that is now what's the another name for that great revolution that took place in 1688 is an example of this later the power of parliament which consisted of people's representatives began to develop nowadays also we can see a parliament in our country too so these these are the historical evidence 
okay types of democratic governance now we are going to learn what are the types of democratic governance when we inquire about democratic governance two main types of it can be noticed okay when we inquired about democratic governance two main types what are the types how many types two main types of it can be noticed okay direct democracy and indirect democracy okay in for indirect democracy we can say representative democracy okay now we are going to learn about direct democracy the governance which existed in greek city state police of athens is a good example of direct democracy now you all know the governance which existed in greek city state we learned about that word polis of athens is a good example of direct democracy now athens is a good example of for what direct democracy because why now we learned okay before few minutes we learned about that because the people okay people were the active part of the governance okay so that's what called demo direct democracy direct democracy is the system in which people gather in one place so direct democracy is the system that's a system in which people gather in one place discuss and take collective decisions on state administrative functions with the consent of the people swiftly and directly okay professor garner there are many definitions because why so direct democracy is the system in which people gather in one place okay discuss and take collective decisions on state administrative functions okay with the consent of the people swiftly and directly so these are the things we can be seen in greek city state police okay so the problems arising out of implementing direct democracy at present the large and masses of present status vast population of present status the difficulty of getting all the citizens to rally in one place complexity of social needs so these things are the problems arising out of implementing getting direct democracy at present these things are the problems now we are going to learn about indirect democracy considering the practical problems in implementing direct democratic governance the system of elected representatives emerged now kutala you all know about these things because direct democracy so while they were uh, maintaining that they faced many problems okay so they consider about the practical problems in implementing direct democratic governance so nowadays also we can see ministers and parliament ministers nowadays also you can say likewise they appointed because uh, that mean people were the active part of the governance no so that was the really difficult to get decisions okay so they appointed ministers to help help the people to do the government's decisions okay it is called indirect democracy of representative democracy so it is called indirect democracy or representative democracy okay indirect democracy took root in europe as an instrument of administration okay indirect democracy took root that's the main part that's the main point okay in europe as an instrument of administration philosophic ideas nurtured in further as a result representative institutions such as the parliament came into being by the time it has turned into a parliament system nowadays in sri lanka also we can see okay there are some ministers and uh, so they are gathering and they are making some uh, decisions opinions so likewise okay democracy is a government of people by the people and for the people democracy is government of people people's government okay by the people and for the people abraham lincoln there are many definitions okay you have to study these things democracy provides right for everybody as a tool of governance sailor now 
Democracy provides right for everybody. It provides rights for everybody as a tool of governance. Okay, so in a representative democracy, the citizens themselves cannot take part in the governance. The opinions of the voters is directly assessed in some countries where representative democracy is practiced. Now, in a representative democracy, the citizens themselves cannot take part in the governance. People, they cannot, they can't directly involve for the, to take the decisions for the governance. Okay, so the opinion of voters is directly assessed in some countries. But some countries, they are, uh, that means that the people, opinions of voters are directly assessed in some countries where representative democracy is practiced. The referendum in the constitution of the democratic socialist republic of Sri Lanka is one such example. Now, in our country, as an example, we can get our country. Okay, now we learned many things about the democratic governments, uh, especially uh, there was an introduction of, uh, to democratic governance, especially democracy and we discussed about the, uh, about the original and the expansion of democratic governance and as well as we discussed about the Saptapa Aparihani Dharma, especially we discussed about type of uh, democratic governance. So, uh, and we discussed about especially direct democracy and indirect democracy and uh, many definitions we discussed. Next, we have discussed about importance of democracy as a system of governance. So, Kiputala, hope to meet from the next topic. That's the importance of democracy as a system of governance.